let us look at the storage related aspects so that are uh, the advanced aspects of uh, Linux. Uh, you may not have any live demo as part of uh, this particular uh, section because uh, these are all one time activities and one should not be messing around with uh, these commands. But I want to mention them here so that you can read about them and when you have a new machine that you want to configure, your awareness about these may help you also identify the right kind of a configuration. So there are two things that we need to learn about. Uh, the first thing is the logical volume management, which means that if you have multiple physical disks, they can actually be considered as a single logical volume by the Linux operating system. So it means, for example, you may have several disks of a particular size, but the partition that you would like to have needs a lot of space. And there is no hard disk that will come in that particular size. Now what do we do? So you can actually define a logical volume which uh, spans over all those disks so that the volume is uh, shown to you as if it is at a higher capacity though individual disks may be at a lower capacity. Now that is something that is very convenient so that we are not limited by the availability of uh, that particular size of the hard disk. Okay, so pulling multiple storage devices as a single logical volume is something that is very much well established in Linux. And there are a whole bunch of tools that come under the uh, package LVM2 where we can create and manage virtual block devices from physical devices. And uh, what are mounted in the uh, Linux operating system by the file system are actually the virtual block devices uh, which uh, are mapped over to multiple physical devices so that uh, we don't have to worry about which piece of data is written to which disk. We are looking at as a continuum continuous segment of a logical volume. And uh, RAID is another concept that we must be familiar. It expands to redundant arrays of independent disks. And this is basically for multiple purposes, essentially uh, to have higher speed and uh, for uh, redundancy so that if any of the disks fail, the storage box uh, would not uh, go out of uh, its uh, usage but you are able to recover the data and go on to continue using the rest of the disks uh, by replacing the damaged disk with a new one and the data should get rebuilt by itself. So some of those advanced features are very much possible today. And what is done uh, in this particular action namely uh, writing the data to multiple disks and making two copies of some of the uh, data uh, in uh, two different disks. Uh, and, and also to ensure that uh, when a new disk has uh, been replaced, then uh, writing the data onto it correctly. So all these are done by what is called a RAID controller. And RAID controller can be a software or hardware. Today, uh, hardware RAID controllers are not very expensive. So if you are buying a workstation, you can buy one with a RAID controller so that uh, you have the ability to have multiple uh, hard disks um, which can be combined as a single storage. Now there are various RAID modes that are available. So these come in uh, uh, continuous sequence from 0 to 6 but I am giving you here what are more popularly uh, used. So RAID 0 uh, is uh, for striping which means that if you are going to use two disks you can think of the two disks as one so where half of, of the files are written in both the disks so that they are like two stripes and the capacity is now double. So where does it help? It basically helps in doubling up the speed of access of a file. Okay, And RAID 1 mode is for mirroring. That means any piece of the file is written to both the disks so that if one of them fails, you have the other copy ready. And uh, in this case, what happens is when you are reading the file, it is uh, twice as fast. But when you are writing, it is only uh, as fast as n-1. So mirroring is also one reason. Uh, hard disks which are SATA type will have a moving uh, uh, component. So they may get damaged over a period of time. So it's not about uh, if a hard disk fails. Usually to be called as when the hard disk fails because it will sure definitely will fail. And so it has uh, been a good practice to have the storage in RAID 1 mode for operating system so that if one disk fails, the other one is still serving you. The probability of both the disks failing at the same time is very very low. And therefore if you invest in the second disk for OS alone, then your machine can be up and running without any problem caused by the hardware failure. RAID 5 is when you have more than uh, three disks so that uh, you have an ability to 
uh, have uh, the data written to more than one disk for every file so that of the disks if one disk fails you have not lost any file now that kind of a uh, distributed parity uh, is uh, very useful because uh, you can have large amount of storage because you are writing to multiple disks at the same time if one disk fails you have not lost anything and you can have that parity over two disks if you opt for raid 6 and that means that two disks can fail and you still have not lost any data now this actually gives a very good security for your storage box so that uh, your services to offer the uh, storage based uh, uh, data transfer can be uh, seamless and we don't have to worry if any disk fails because uh, most of the modern hardware supports uh, uh, hot swap that means uh, if a disk has failed you can actually plug it off and put a new one on the fly and uh, the server need not be shut down and the storage need not be shut down and everything just works quite smoothly so in situations of uh, these namely when you do mirroring or raid 5 or raid 6 the usable capacity is less than the actual capacity so that is something that we have to accept because we are actually taking the benefit of uh, parity therefore we have to lose something and that is basically the usable capacity so more the number of disks more is the usable capacity but it will never be equal to the actual capacity except when you do the striping in which case parity is absent so here are some uh, images from the wikipedia which uh, show you the philosophy so raid 0 is striping only so which means that a1 a2 a3 a4 so you can see that the uh, bits and uh, pieces of the file are written to both the disks so they are actually writing in uh, speed 2 and when you're reading also it will be speed 2 only thing is that if one disk fails then you have lost the data so it's not a good idea only for speed it is good but not for uh, disk failure raid 5 you can see that a1 a2 a3 and then ap where p is a number you can choose depending upon which uh, part of the file so which means that uh, you can write one third of a file to a second disk okay and you write the other one third of the next segment to the second disk and the second disk will be shifted from 0 to 1 to 2 to 3 so that way what happens is that in a raid 5 if one disk completely fails the other three will contain all the three parts of every file and therefore you can rebuild the uh, disk 3 uh, again when you put a fresh one there similarly raid 6 also will allow only thing is there if you fail two disks we you still have uh, the redundancy available raid 1 is where you have got exact copies in two disks which is good if uh, one disk fails the other one will continue to run so for operating system alone people tend to use raid 1 for uh, the home direct storage people tend to use raid 5 or raid 6 so here is an image of uh, Synology in NAS box from Amazon so here you can have like you know a number of disks so you can have a 30 terabyte or 70 terabyte uh, kind of storages uh, which can be mounted as a single partition in Linux and all these then uh, will be uh, configured as a raid and the uh, rest of the work is taken care by the driver so you are looking at it just as a partition and you can access all the storage directly so let us look at that demo by looking at storages which are humongous and you will realize from the size that it can't be from one disk it has to be from raid so let us look at that as an example so let us look at the uh, storages that are available uh, in uh, our machine so the desktop where I am recording uh, I have got uh, storage that is about one terabyte you can make out the uh, hard disk capacity here so we have already looked at that and um, I will log on to my desktop machine where I have got uh, slightly larger storage and you see that here the storage says it's 22 terabytes so the largest capacity of a hard disk right now is about 12 terabytes so this definitely means that it cannot be one disk so it is actually a RAID storage uh, which is coming from multiple disks and uh, for us it is mounted as just one volume uh, on a folder called slash ehome so it's just a path and on that we have got 22 terabytes uh, available uh, thanks to the RAID concept now uh, let us look at uh, what kind of storage is available on the Intel dev cloud just for curiosity so we have a lot of uh, mount points 
but uh, here is the p store which is parallel storage system which shows that they have about 300 terabyte storage three times so roughly one petabyte storage is available on the intel dev cloud uh, for free for us when we create our login and use it so this is obviously not easy to imagine so there is no single hard disk that will give you this kind of a capacity this is all collection of multiple hard disks being made available as a single folder on the linux so you can see that uh, for the convenience of a folder that is mounted you have got a humongous amount of storage available thanks to the technologies that are available uh, of combining multiple disks into a logical volume we will also log in to uh, the supercomputer in our own uh, campus so where we can look at what is the storage and here you can see that it has uh, two folders uh, where they are mounting the storage slash lfs and slash lfs1 and these are respectively uh, about 264 terabyte and 791 terabyte together it's about one petabyte storage so in our supercomputer on campus we have a petabyte storage again it is made possible because there are a lot of drives that are actually combined together as a logical volume for the Linux to uh, make it as an offering for the users so that they can simply uh, access their folders on these uh, uh, paths uh, and work uh, quite smoothly without worrying about which part of their file is stored on which hard disk in which uh, collection of hard disks etc. So RAID makes uh, all these things very much possible uh, with the speed and uh, LVM technology makes this possible for us to mount as a single mount point in the uh, Linux file system. So by learning more about these two technologies, uh, we may be able to uh, save some uh, time and effort as well as money. For example, so for example, when you want to have uh, a large amount of storage for your desktop, instead of buying the capacity uh, that is right now released, uh, you can buy cheaper ones which are at a lower capacity and uh, combine them as a RAID volume and thereby have a speed up resilience against the failure of one of the hard disks and at the same time mount it as a single uh, path in your file system for the convenience also. So Linux allows all these things. So knowing about these technologies may help you in building your own machine and also configuring one which is fast resilient against hardware failures and convenient for large systems that you may want to work on. So I hope this was useful for you. So with that we come to the end of uh, these uh, discussions about uh, Linux operating system, terminal environment and uh, writing scripts. So have fun.